Welcome to the Flourishing Schools podcast. My name is Matthew Mann, and I am the executive director of Sekola Palita Harapan Schools. These are the schools of light and hope. Uh, we call them Espeha, five international Christian schools in Indonesia. And it's my pleasure to share with you today the first episode on our Flourishing Schools theme. At Espeja, we believe, and I am dedicated in my work to seeing children thrive. Uh, one of the themes in our schools is made to thrive. We believe that children and teachers and schools themselves are made to thrive. And so our podcast is going to be all about thriving or flourishing uh, in many different ways, all sorts of different ways. And our first episode today is focused on professional learning for teachers, for high impact teaching. And I'm really grateful today to have as my first guest on this series, Dr. Barry Sheely. Uh, I met Barry about two years ago, uh, maybe even to the day when Barry flew here from Georgia to test the waters as to the possibility of joining our group of schools. Uh, Barry was an academic leader for more than 20 years in a Christian school in Georgia. And I was really hopeful that he would come and help us in thinking about what it means to grow as a school, specifically in the way of learning and professional learning. And it took, uh, took an extra year before Barry and his wife were able to move here, but we're just really blessed to have them. Uh, Barry, uh, share a little about yourself, uh, your background, your, your own learning. Uh, we're talking about professional learning. What, what has that meant for you as a professional? Okay, well, um, I've been a, a longtime math teacher and, uh, and then as a school administrator and a teacher trainer. Uh, I have degrees in uh, math education, mathematics, uh, uh, school administration, and Christian studies. Um, most, the last few years I've been working in a school uh, providing uh, professional learning and uh, oversight of the curriculum and also uh, school improvement and accreditation. Awesome. Well, when I visited uh, the U.S. a few months ago, and I met some of the people who lead schools in your association there, and I casually mentioned, oh, yeah, Barry Sheely joined us in Espeja. Uh, they, they said uh, they, they were very complimentary. They said, oh, you got Barry Sheely. <laughs> so we're just really thankful to have you here with our team, working with our teachers and our leaders. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to start our, our first podcast by exploring something that's really at the, at the very foundation of what it means for a school to be excellent. Uh, without professional learning, it's not possible to grow. Um, so let, let's start with that topic then, Barry, uh, which is the, the purpose or the, or the reason. Why is it that school leaders need to make sure that professional learning is a big part of the, the life of the school? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the first thing I think about is, um, is in whatever we do, uh, God has given us a calling and a vocation in part of his calling us to him. And, uh, and throughout scripture, it talks about how we are empowered uh, in, that, in that calling. But I was particularly taken by uh, Paul's uh, challenge to Timothy in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4, where he reminded him that, uh, that he was gifted and that he should not neglect the use of that gift and that he should devote himself to studying and understanding that gift in verse 15 and uh, so that others would see your growth. So I think uh, God empowers our gift, but he also expects us to be growing. Um, a uh, Christian educator, Howard Hendricks, uh, once said that uh, if you stop learning today, you stop teaching tomorrow. And I think that uh, that learning for a teacher is just a natural natural part of their uh, professional life. Uh, we're always seeking to grow in our uh, pedagogy, in our content, in our understanding of our students, and uh, and and many other areas. There is one of the things that I, I, maybe I'd put it this way: one of the things that I love about my work as as an educator and, and now a leader is that there's no end of things to learn about. Here we are in classrooms helping children to learn, but we ourselves as educators have so much to learn. Mm -hmm. how, how, do we, how do we decide uh, what makes the cut? Like what, what's important for teachers in professional learning? 
Well, I think we have to start from, uh, from our perspective, our vision as educators, because different schools are going to have different visions. And within a Christian school, uh, we have a particular uh, view. So we've got to think about what that foundation is and ideally not try to go back in and build that foundation after you built the building. How do we, you know, what are we based on? And then uh, as teachers, I, I want to grow, as I was a math teacher, I wanted to learn more math myself. Uh, as I learned and struggled in, uh, with new content area, I understand that struggle for my students as well. It's also important to understand uh, uh, pedagogy. You know, how do we pre uh, develop our, our students? Uh, how do we teach our students? And also how do we assess our students? And, um, and, and so forth. So uh, we also have in our own schools, we have the frameworks that the tools that we use for Christian deeper learning of uh, Cambridge and uh, IB. With the IB framework, uh, teachers have to be oriented to that as well. During the pandemic, we suddenly were faced with the need to, to shift our use of time. We had to suddenly learn how to be really excellent at using technology and teaching in that in that method and and so that really um, uh, underscored for me as a leader of leaders that the organization of of our learning and our and our, uh, our maybe would say our professional learning plan that that really matters so how do how do you organize that so it's not haphazard so it's strategic well the um it, what we need, what we need to develop, and I hope that over in the next couple of years that we can develop a strong uh, uh, professional learning plan uh, for uh, for our schools. We have great resources, having five schools and the staff here uh, for professional learning, and uh, and we have to think through our priorities. We have to think through uh, the uh, uh, system wide priorities, uh, whether it's whether it's uh, Christian education and what that looks like, whether it's in the case of the last couple of years, how do we deal with hybrid learning and online learning and use of technology? Um, individual schools are going to have particular um, uh, priorities as well and emphases. Uh, and uh, whether it be IB, project-based learning, or various different uh, frameworks like that, uh, we also need to provide opportunities for teachers to uh, pursue their own personal needs and um, and also uh, small groups of teachers to focus on particular learning needs of uh, groups of students. So uh, a professional learning plan ideally would take all of that into account, would receive the, in, the input from teachers as well uh, to know how to organize that and how to plan it. Hmm. That's a lot, uh, a lot to organize. Is that a document? Is, is that something where school leaders publish a I don't know, a 10 pager or a 20 pager on this is, these are the priorities and this is the structure, the order. Is, is, is that what you're, you're, you're envisioning? I think, it, uh, I think it would greatly help to have a document that's a professional learning plan so that we can uh, continually go, particularly as leadership changes, as staff changes, we know how to uh, set those priorities, how to arrange it, what sort of uh, mechanisms we need and, uh, and what sort of input we need. How do we gain uh, input from the teachers? Like for example, do we have a professional learning committee uh, of teachers that uh, informs that as well? well? One of the things that I think works really effectively here at Espeja is the, the use of Wednesday afternoons where we send our students home around lunchtime and we have a few hours on Wednesday afternoons and that's for all sorts of different purposes, a chapel and a collaborative planning, et cetera. But, but we, we do have time. Uh, so, 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 so tell me a little about time. And over the course of a year with a few PD days, and, and in our case, Wednesday afternoons, other schools do different things. How much time is appropriate for, for a school or for a teacher so that, let's say, in the course of a year, they can feel good that they've, they've had enough time for professional learning? Well, um, to just suddenly say a number, let me not say a number okay. yet, <laughs> because uh, different people have different perspectives on what professional learning is. And uh, on those Wednesday afternoons, we have those great, a great opportunity to have presentations, to have uh, workshops and so forth. 
but uh, those pres presentations and workshops, as valuable as uh, they are, uh, to be effective, they have to have um, have ongoing involvement where uh, you're trying, teachers are trying something out and then they are uh, collaborating and uh, sharing their experiences and then they're going back to the drawing board and trying something new. And so it's, it's uh, like a feedback loop that takes place over a period of time and that's the most effective uh, professional growth. Now, um, so what the idea, the ideal is to have a combination of, of learning opportunities where uh, teachers are either reading, hearing a presentation, and then they're following up on that. Now, all of that time can uh, be considered, is considered part of that professional learning process. Uh, so uh, generally uh, around the world, when you look at accreditation agencies, uh, certification requirements in uh, in the I know in, especially in the United States and Australia this is the same. Usually, what you're looking at is around 20 hours a year of uh, professional learning. Uh, if it's structured well and defined well, it can include this process of teachers working in their classroom and collaborating and growing together. So you're not describing. A lot of people seated in rows, staring up at one person, talking at them, or a lot of people just watching a video passively. That's not what I'm sensing in you. Right. Not 20 hours of sitting in front of a uh, speaker <laughs> presenting. Uh, but, and while that can be a uh, valuable uh, source of information, that's not the primary part of a professional learning. Another angle, Barry, on professional learning is new teachers, where in our case, we often, uh, well, every year, we welcome 25 to 30 new teachers. They're coming from other countries, most of them. Some of them are very young, and there's a lot to learn. So onboarding or induction of new people. Um, wh what are your thoughts about that? How, how can we do that as, as Christian schools in ways that are, are uh, empowering our, our new teachers to be successful? Right, so, uh, so that's always a challenge for every school. And uh, that's something that we have started working on. I have uh, surveyed our various academic leaders uh, in, the, in the schools to get a sense of what the priorities uh, they see. Uh, I've looked at what we've done in the past. Uh, coming into any Christian school, a challenge is often uh, teachers may not have had experience in a Christian school before. And so understanding what, even if they are strong Christians, they may not understand what Christian education is about. So we've got to provide some introduction to that, some orientation to that. Uh, then the frameworks, the tools that we use for deeper learning here, like uh, IB and, uh, and Cambridge, we have to orient them to, uh, to those, um, those frameworks as well. Um, and, uh, and the ideas that they need to be thinking about as they plan instruction. If they're young teachers, uh, just out of their pro uh, professional development programs in college, uh, they need support to grow as, uh, as instructors, as assessors, as uh, coaches and helpers for their, for their students. And so we're trying to uh, think through what can be done ahead of time as they're coming in, what in that whirlwind of that first week of arriving here in Indonesia, what that looks like, you know, what can we do that would be effective and would carry on, and then how can we, uh, we uh, support them in their ongoing growth as they get started. And I'm excited on that point that this year, more than before, we will be giving guidance and opportunities for them to prepare ahead of time. Uh, we call it pre-field orientation, where when they already arrive in Indonesia, they, they know something. It's not, it's not starting you know, day one uh, at the point of arrival. Uh, Barry, we, we are Christian schools. That's integral. It's, it's essential to our identity. And we, that means that we need our teachers to understand Christian education. And in, in our group of schools, historically, we've actually had a program called Understanding Christian Education. And I, I'm really thankful that you have taken on the project of reviving and renewing that and coming up with a fresh version, which we're launching next week. Um, t tell our, our listeners a little about your perspective on what Christian teachers need to learn 
um, a, a professional learning program in another school wouldn't have in a secular school wouldn't have any of this content so what is it that they need to learn in order to be effective in in a christian school so that's um that's uh something that every christian school has to has to think about and too often when it's presented uh teachers especially maybe experienced teachers coming out of a public school or a government school type of uh, set secular school setting um, they, you know, they have their vision of what uh, teaching looks like. And then when we start talking about Christian education, uh, often they see it as a bunch of things that they're tacking on. So it's more that I have to teach, uh, more things that I have to add on, and it can be really overwhelming. Uh, the best way to look at Christian education is as a foundation or a, uh, a worldview that, uh, that our teaching, everything we do grows out of. So we look at uh, our purpose of education, the vision that we're trying to create. We're trying to craft a vision in our students' minds and lives uh, for what they're going to do when they, when they finish their schooling. Uh, so uh, that purpose of education, that vision we're trying to cast uh, is an important part of that. And then as teachers, we have to understand uh, the nature of the learner. You know, who are these uh, little people, or big people, uh, who are sitting in front of us? Uh, how do we understand them? How do we understand how they, how God's designed them? And what implications that has for how they grow? How do we understand our role as a teacher? Um, from a Christian perspective, uh, there, there are ways that we can think about who a teacher is and what a teacher does and what a, how a teacher re interacts with their students. Uh, we actually um, think about how we craft our instruction. Uh, we want instruction that engages students, that, um, that challenges students that gets students to look beyond themselves to something bigger. So how do we craft those classroom experiences? And there is a Christian perspective on craft, crafting instruction and assessment. How do we look at assessment? Is, are we only looking at what they don't know? Or are we trying to get information about our students and understand how to help them grow and make that next step and understand where they are? So there is a, a, a Christian perspective on uh, assessment as well. And the curriculum, what do we teach? And uh, how do we organize it and present it? There are Christian perspectives on that. And those are the types of things that we'll work through as we work through um, uh, the modules uh, for under understanding Christian education that we're using. Well, I'm excited about it. It's been a few years that I've, I've had in mind for uh, Espeja to revive and strengthen that program. And Barry, I'm, I'm just so thankful that you've joined us here and that you've taken, taken the reins on something that I am fundamentally responsible for. And I, I just am so happy to share with you the, the, the task of helping five schools and a lot of teachers grow in their ability to be excellent in the classroom. I'm looking forward to that journey together as a group, and, and I'm uh, excited about our Flourishing Schools podcast as we begin uh, episode one this, uh, this time with a focus on professional learning for high impact teaching. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed uh, having a conversation with Dr. Barry Sheely, Director of Learning at SPH. And uh, in future, we will be focusing on other ways that schools can help teachers and children to flourish in their work.